Hi, welcome to Flight Test, I'm Josh, and today we're going to be showing you how to build the FT Flyer Swappable, also known as the dart that we've covered in previous uh, episodes, but this one's uniquely different. This is the second in line of our swappable series, the first one being our nutball, the second being the FT Flyer, and the third one being a build you've probably already seen called the Delta. Now what this is, is right in the middle of the line here, this has a conventional airframe, has great high alpha uh, abilities, uh, general aerobatics are great, but it's just an all around great airplane. Now the first step you're going to want to do is download your plans. Now we're cutting this video into two videos and we're going to be doing this with the swappable series from now on. Reason being is we want to go into great depth on both the fuselage and which is going to go from plane to plane and also the different airframes. So we're going to make a whole separate video with the building log of the fuselage so you guys can spend more time getting a complete picture of how to build a fuselage and then go ahead and build your airframe. But what you do need to do is actually build the fuselage first. So if you look down below us here in the information column you're going to see a link going to a different video and that's going to be how to build your fuselage. If you've already built your fuselage from previous builds and you're getting ready to build the FT Flyer, you're ready to download the FT Flyer plans, go ahead and tape them together and cut them out as these will be patterns over your foam board. And speaking of foam board, they actually have different kinds of foam board now. I actually got this at Dollar General and this is uh, the Adams foam board that we use that's normally at Dollar Tree, but it comes in black and it's every bit as light as the white stuff too. So you have different color options now. Hopefully it'll come out with some reds and some oranges and some blues and greens and different colors so we'll have more variety in the air. But you can actually get different colors. Uh, go ahead and lay out your foam board, lay out your plans, and you're only gonna need to cut four pieces out now counting your fuselage uh, to actually build this plane. So it's very simple. And a little added tip for you, when you go ahead and cut this plane, especially this style with very few uh, curves, actually no curves at all, you can actually just lay your plans over the foam board and just put marks at the actual tips where your angles of your lines change. Then you just can simply go back, lay your ruler from point to point, and when you cut, use a very sharp X-Acto blade, but actually start before the line and end after the line. That way it'll give you a nice intersecting cut. If you start from the point and end at a point, what you'll have is a whole bunch of ratty little edges that will uh, kind of keep the paper cut because when you cut at an angle, it actually is on the bottom layer a little bit before and after. So starting before your, your point and after your point will give you a nice thorough clean cut and make all your edges very sharp. Now that we have our pieces cut out, the first thing that we're gonna do is also the most complicated. But it won't be to you guys, because if you built your folded fuselage first, it's the exact same process for the rear fuse that the wing, the elevator, and the rudder are gonna be fastened to as the folded fuselage. You're gonna wanna go ahead and use the red line to score lines, score about two thirds of the way through, and then fold back your side cheek all the way over top of your bottom plate in uh, 180 degrees. So you're exposing that, that um, two score line cavity there. Use your fingernail and dig out the foam. It should peel right off of the paper if you're using the Dollar Tree foam board. Also found in Dollar General now. And uh, make that cavity. Once you've done that to both sides, lay your uh, fuselage on a flat building surface you, on one side, don't do both sides at the same time, put a thin bead of glue starting just after the starting point and ending just before the finishing point so when it, the glue squeezes out, it doesn't squeeze out both ends and make a mess. Go ahead and take your side cheek over top of your bottom fuselage plate, just like you did with your fuselage, and uh, hold it there until it dries. Once it's dry and perpendicular, go ahead and do your next size, let it dry, and you're done. Now that your rear part of your folded fuselage is done, the next step is going to be to put on your uh, tail feathers, which is your elevator and your rudder. But before we do that, we got to cut the hinge lines into them. Now, let's start with your rudder. Make sure when you cut your hinge line, just so you have continuity with your nutball and any previous designs that have a three-channel uh, conventional format, which means rudder, elevator, and throttle, cut your hinge line on the left-hand side if you're facing, uh, just like you'd be the pilot in the cockpit. Uh, cut your hinge line in the left hand side of your rudder. That way when you install your servos, your control horns and everything will meet on the smooth side which is very important. So go ahead and uh, score from the plans, you can take your, your score lines there, where the red line is, and then fold back your rudder over top of your fin. Once you fold back your rudder over top of your fin, take a, uh, a ruler and lay it about a quarter of an inch back, 
from your foam and then cut a beveled edge roughly a 45 degree angle making sure not to cut through the center piece of paper that's folded in a crease. If you do don't worry about it you can simply use tape to repair it but it's nice if you can keep the paper intact because it'll act as a hinge for you. Once you're done with your rudder go ahead and move on to your elevator using the red score lines as a reference and then fold it back just like you did with your rudder and use your 45 degree angle giving it a quarter of an inch gap with your ruler just like before. Now you're ready to go ahead and put them on your fuselage. To install the elevator onto the rear part of the fuselage, first make a center line on the top of the stabilizer right at the hinge line. Uh, you'll be able to look through the rear part of the fuselage slot that the rudder goes into and physically line up that center point there because that's both the center on the fuselage and your elevator. Uh, then go ahead and fold up your elevator 90 degrees uh, so the hinge line and the rear part of the fuselage are in alignment with each other. Uh, that should give you a nice perpendicular line, but go ahead and make some reference marks and then flip it over lining up your marks and confirm the fact that the point of your stabilizer is also the center point of your rear fuselage. If it's off slightly it's not a big deal but it will look a little bit funny. Once you're happy with the fit finish off your reference lines put two lines of glue on the top plate within those reference lines not going right down the center because that's where your uh, rudder is going to notch into. Uh, and then go ahead and uh, fasten down your fuselage firmly into your stabilizer. Wait for it to dry and you're ready to go to your fin. Now to put your fin in, go ahead and first do a test fit, uh, confirming the fact that the hinge line of both the stabilizer and your fin are going to line up along with the rear part of your fuselage. Once you've confirmed that, make sure it's perpendicular and once you're happy with the fit, put a nice healthy bead of glue down in that uh, slot that's cut in the rear part of the fuselage, slide it in and then hold it perpendicular until the glue is thoroughly dried. Once you're happy with the fit, you're ready for your next step which is installing the wings. While you have your tail feathers on the rear part of your fuselage, the next step is going to be your wing. And uh, to make the wing is very simple. First you're going to want to make sure that you cut out your wing, which you should have done in the first step. Transfer over your marks onto your uh, paper using the plans laying over top of your wing that you've cut out. That's the servos, that's the notches for your fuselage. And uh, take time and remove just the top surface. If you leave the paper on, it'll make the top part of your wing look much nicer. But go ahead and dig that out. I actually use a bamboo skewer and physically ball it out and dig it out once I've scored those lines, not going all the way through. And then down the center line, you're going to want to make a score about two thirds of the way through. And that's going to actually be where we put our dihedral through. Now for your dihedral, it's very simple. Crack your wing so it actually has a little bit of a gap in there. And then take roughly a three and a half inch block. I actually use things laying around the house, books, uh, toolboxes, whatever, to build up about three and a half inches. Go ahead and build up the platform so you can lay one half of the wing down. Lay down some glue inside the center line and then move it back and forth so the glue spreads down inside that gap. And then block up or hold down the top part on top of your platform you built up and let the wing tip settle down onto your workbench. Uh, let that dry thoroughly. Don't jump it or you're going to lose dihedral or gain dihedral. None of the which really matters. It's just going to change the way your plane looks. Now too much dihedral will give you a wobbly Dutch roll and too little dihedral will plake the plane uh, kind of skid around and turn. So you want just the right amount but you can actually play with this and get find the perfect amount. For me three and a half inches or uh, nine centimeters was perfect. Uh, once that's all dry lay a piece of extreme packing tape over top of it just to keep your wing from folding in the future through lots of loops and everything from stressing out and getting more dihedral in the future than what you want and you're ready for the next step. And the next step is to join that to a rear part of our fuselage that already contains our tail surfaces. Now make sure you've marked your servo locations so you again can easily put your 9 gram servos or whatever you really want to use. Uh, you can go down a small 5 gram or you can go bigger if you want. It'll handle the weight just fine and it's close enough to the CG you don't have to worry too much. But go ahead and transfer the rough locations of that just so you make sure that you have that because it's on the bottom of the wing right now and you want it on the top. Now to install the wing first you want to do is uh, go ahead and slide the wing into the rear part of the fuselage making sure that the rudder just tabs just over the rear part of the trailing edge of the wing. Once you're happy with alignment of your fuselage to your wing and also to the front part of your fuselage, go ahead and make some reference lines centering up the crease of your dihedral with the center line of your rear fuselage. Once you have those reference lines, apply some hot glue on the top part of your uh, fuselage and then pretty much just slide your wing right in and then hold it to those alignment marks using the center line on your rudder and also the center line of your dihedral and your reference marks to get everything perpendicular. Let that dry nice and thorough and if you want since we're going over extreme packing tape you can go ahead and reinforce that uh, with more extreme packing tape uh, if you're uncomfortable about that or you can just when you put your extreme packing tape on just trim it back before you glue it on. All of it works just fine. Once you're happy with the way everything fits you're ready to actually join the front part of your fuselage with the dowels onto the rest of your airframe. The, uh, the wing and the tail assembly is ready to be mounted now to the front part of your folded fuselage. And to do this, 
slide your uh, rear part of your fuselage into your folded fuselage and line it up just like it would be, but you're missing your dowels. Once you've done that, take your rear barbecue skewer and poke through the back of the rear fuselage on both sides. Uh, don't try to figure out where the next one is and go clean through because what will happen is you'll be off alignment and you'll put too many holes that you want in your fuselage. Don't fret if you don't get it lined up perfectly. Just take some extreme packing tape and wrap it around there and you can remake your holes in the extreme packing tape. will keep everything nice and solid. Once you have your barbecue skewer fastened in your rear fuselage to your front fuselage on the rear, line up the leading edge of your wing to your firewall and, and take your barbecue skewer the point side and poke right through your firewall holes back into your wing. Go about two to three inches, um, eight to nine centimeters for you, and uh, make those cavities. Twist it around so it actually opens up the foam in that area. Then remove your rear barbecue skewer, take two new barbecue skewers, fill both holes up with glue, and push them back in there and let it dry thoroughly. Now, if you cut your uh, barbecue skewers too long, you can always go back later on once you've mounted your plane and cut them to the proper size. Then take some sandpaper and actually uh, sand a little bit of a bevel in there. That way it'll be easier to install in the future. Let everything dry and you're done. We're on the home stretch now. Uh, we have our fuselage and our airframe all combined now and they're notched in and everything looks great there. Next step is to put our servos, our push rods, and our control horns together. Now we're going to do our control horns and our servos first. What you'll want to do is uh, take those reference marks that were from the plans and just give a general location. I like it from the inside. Now if you're using the Hextronic 9 grams or Turnergy 9 grams, it's pretty much just as you see on the plans. But what I like to do is keep everything a little bit snug because that way the servos will be super solid. Um, go ahead and uh, notch through that, uh, make your reference marks, and cut out the holes for your servos to go through. And if it's tight enough, all you need to do is put a drop of uh, CA or uh, hot glue underneath both parts of the, uh, the screw down hold downs and let that push up through the servo screw hole and that'll actually mushroom over and fasten your servos down wonderfully. For your control horns, make sure that you uh, fasten securely with hot glue so it doesn't wiggle out. If you lose a control horn, you lose your control surface and that's not a good thing. Uh, repeat the step on the left hand side of your elevator, favoring about an inch from the center line and uh, once again repeating the process making sure that the holes on your control horn are directly above the hinge line on your stabilizer. Once you're happy with the fit you're ready to make your push rods. Now the final step is the push rods. Uh, you've gotten your servos installed, you have your control horns installed. Go ahead and power on your airframe at this time connect your servos to your receiver and get your servos centered. Now it's really important since this will be a swappable fuselage to go ahead and make sure everything is trimmed as center as possible. The reason you want to do this is so you can take one fuselage, unplug it from one airframe, plug a new airframe down and theoretically everything will be dialed in as close as possible so you don't have to try to match trims or get anything centered. Now one little bit of preparation you take now will benefit you in the long run and you'll be able to switch out airframes in a matter of minutes. So, get your go ahead and get your servo centered, your control horns on, and I like to use those speed clevises, I believe is what they're called, because you can slide your rod in and make instant adjustments. That way, if you are off just a little bit, instead of you having to make a whole new push rod with modified Z bends, you can go ahead and uh, physically just loosen up a screw, readjust it, and tighten it down. <laughs> now, we're using thin wire on this, and because we're using thin wire, they're gonna bend. A neat trick Chad taught me a long time ago was take a piece of zip tie and go ahead and tighten it as much as you can and then cut a pointed beveled edge on it. Uh, by doing that you can actually pierce through the foam and hot glue it down and give your push rod support so you don't have to add a lot of weight and thicker push rods. You can just simply brace your push rods where they're going to bend and that keeps it light and very very useful. And also you can route your wires down because if you notice this air style or airframe actually has a bend in the wire where it goes over the wing and down to the control horns. Once you're happy with the way everything fits go ahead and dial in your throws I use about a half of an inch uh, either way for you guys out there it's about a centimeter and a half up and down throw with about 20% expo well our push rods are in our servos are in everything centered up and locked down now we want to finalize everything let's put your servo screws in uh, make sure your throws are the right direction and also that the uh, the throws aren't too extreme or too little and uh, set up your expos I like flying on these little trainers about 20 to 30 percent expo so it's a real nice soft stick which is really good and also with your battery uh, you can change any kind of battery you want. Um, I like the 503 cells because it's very light and very powerful, but you can go up to 1000. All you need to do is just make sure that your plane balances out. Now, we have our battery fastened with rubber bands. If you don't like uh, where that's located because you're using a heavy battery like a, a 1000 milliamp battery, um, you can actually slide it back further. Just take a piece of uh, Velcro, put it on the bottom of your fuselage and use the Velcro to hold your battery instead of rubber bands. Uh, but we are all ready to go fly this. Let's go ahead and see how it flies now. All right, well, we've done our CG. We All our throws are right. I got about 20% in there and about a half inch throw each way. Uh, you guys can go a little bit more crazy if you want, but for starters, it's uh, it's good about a half inch either way. You don't want to over control or make it too touchy.
There we go. She flies wonderfully. Um, everything about this is simplicity, but yet still effectiveness. It's highly maneuverable, but you can dial down the throws and it's highly trainable, which is a wonderful thing. It can grow with you. So even though this is a second airplane, you can start with it being a first, end up being a second and third, where you can learn all your basic maneuvers. And also combining your rudder and your elevator in unique ways, such as do a do a roll, full left and then full down, and then full uh, left again will give you a nice beautiful roll. You can practice those maneuvers out at a high altitude and if you wreck it you don't have to worry because you only had about a buck worth of foam. I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank Stonecap Productions for sponsoring this episode and I want to challenge you to build one of these and if you like it get your friends to build them too. It's a great way to get people in the hobby because it's extremely affordable and extremely easy. Uh, please by all means chat it up on the forums and check flighttest.com. There's always new articles coming up and new features too as well. Chad's always dreaming up some kind of crazy thing. I know the most recent is a uh, way to search by time not only content which is really nice to find the most latest and greatest stuff uh, up until then I'm gonna go ahead and put another battery through this uh, thank you for watching I'll see you next time